Okay, people, this is bad, like bad, bad for every single person that is participating in the culling games. And of course, just in general, any sorcerer, anybody for that matter, that uh, kind of wants to live a little bit in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. Because fam, Kenjaku, formerly known as Suguru Geto, is putting in masterworks. And in fact, honestly, it almost feels like he got them in checkmate, right? Like, let's just digest and dissect what has happened thus far with Kenjaku. I mean, one of the biggest things for starters, you can... Uh, immediately say is once he got rid of gojo once he removed satoru gojo from the picture already it was not necessarily easy pickings but nevertheless definitely a lot easier because gojo was pretty much like think one punch man if you remove saitama from the equation there's not much of a threat that you would have so removing gojo out of the picture in a very sleek and precise manner the way he did it was already epic in and of itself but then on top of that essentially dismantling the whole system of jujutsu sorcery this dude has been a master at being evil so to speak but also at whatever he's trying to obtain because homie has put in the works like flat out one of the biggest things with chapter 191 was how he played everybody how pretty much he made himself the freaking head of this household the 25th head of the Kamo household now masterfully so because 191 for starters i was already blown away like what the hell is this old dude talking about like this guy is the head even noritoshi Kamo is there like not nani so there what 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 bullshit are you on fam because when noritoshi kamo arriving he sees the old dude and the old dude is like where is the head of this household and so and so is supposed to be and noritoshi kamo is just like completely flabbergasted and again that is just masterfully so of how kenjaku played it because he tells him like oh no no no, no. that dude his mind is basically stuck in 150 years ago which i really really think that jujutsu kaisen opposed to a lot of other series where you know a spin-off series it could be a hit or a miss one piece is one where a spin-off off series that is like taking place in whatever time period you want to put it in and the one piece world would be gas i think a jujutsu kaisen spinoff of like 150 years ago for example or 100 years ago just in general back when the sorcerers of you know today that we fear so to speak the sukunas the kenjakus seeing them when they were at their quote-unquote prime or back in the days just in general would be a massively great story like i would freaking die to see okay maybe not die but i would definitely really really love to see those stories because they're so freaking enjoyable so even when we get mentions of 150 years ago i'm like i want to see it i want to see it just like when we just recently seen that flashback of kashimo where he was thinking back to his time with kenjaku which this dude has been around dog like you got to think this guy <laughs> i guess we could get into this little debate right here real quick of people love to put aizen on a pedestal which i am people i put aizen on a pedestal sosuke aizen from bleach in case you don't know pretty much this dude wrangled and mangled everything to his life and constantly one of his famous sayings was just as planned or all according to plan depending on which translation you got of how he masterfully crafted everything and it fell into his lap and to the point where he even tells Ichigo I want to give him a point dog even your birth was all according to plan and Kenjaku is slowly but surely you could argue reaching that plateau of dog look what he's done already he's masterfully crafted everything down to even the flashbacks which even though it's still all very vague we don't know everything but his involvement with yuji's parents and taking over yuji's mom's body like this dude is you could argue there's an argument to be had there that kenjaku is starting to at the very least aim towards getting into that conversation of villains that really did it up villains that really masterfully and carefully crafted everything to their liking to he's the 25th head of you know the kamo family he locked gojo away he is arguably responsible for yuji where he's at right now and I, I, I don't even want to think about him with yuji's pops just no but even the culling games everything he designed there i wouldn't be surprised if somehow some way his manipulation led to where the zenin clan has come because yeah the zenin clan kind of got bought e by maki what if it was because of again kenjaku's interference there's just so many things that this dude has had his hands in that there's the argument that you could be had that kenjaku is vying for that title of just as planned master on some eyes and shit like you don't really see it as eyes because he's not really throwing hands that's the one thing we got to get 
in order to really solidify Ken Jaku as like he's that dude we need to see him start single-handedly dropping bodies big bodies not just like yo he's been kind of doing that paper and pen situation what I mean by that is he's killing you as the devil in the details opposed to straight up brute force because at the end of the day we know if he would have even tried that shit with Satoru Gojo Gojo would have put that dude in a pack and smoked the living fuck out of him so he's not necessarily going with brute force but you could argue that it's more deadly the fact that he's able to maneuver all of this to his liking and when we see him he's pretty much laid out chilling there it reminded me so much of a scene from romance of the three kingdoms where i believe it was sao sao mang day where there's like a army of three quarters of a million people approaching to attack him and homie is laid out on a beach towel and that's pretty much exactly what we see when noritoshi shows up and he's like just chilling there kenjaku is he, he's on the path to greatness fam i also love how he's pretty much like dog mask off okay like you know my identity since shibuya relax with the nonsense i think also that's probably because we had the big movie and stuff and that's probably confusing for people that are jumping into the manga like wait a minute what was satoru get what, what? because Geto was a big part of the movie so they're probably trying to differentiate things then also on top of all of that you gotta add the fact that yeah kenjaku actually pretty much disposed of the people that condemned gojo and put the execution out for yuta to take out yuji essentially he's crafted everything where unless you kill him and get rid of kenjaku completely there is no more going to war via pen like he's done everything possible to solidify that you can't get to him he got rid of those people that put the whole hit out to begin with an exiled gojo the people that basically assigned yuta to assassinate yuji he's a 25th head again He's on some eyes and stuff. And he's so epic that he was even responsible for Noritoshi Kamo cutting his hair. I was there like, oh, so that's why he doesn't look as cool anymore. And he has that whatever you want to call it haircut because I prefer Noritoshi Kamo the way he looked. But obviously, since he's no longer part of the family, which you got to imagine like, like, just imagine when this is animated, dog. This dude was so epic that down to the small details of Noritoshi Kamo cut his hair so that he's not involved with the clan family anymore. And on top of that, he pretty much said, Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. Just get out of my house now. This is mine. I'm the head honcho. Like, masterfully done. Mwah, Kenjaku is quite the uh villain so to speak however we cut back to the current timeline and that's where things start to really shake even more and it must be to be honest with you if you checked out the chainsaw man segment that we had prior to this one uh it must be a thing that i have for girls with scars on their face hello i have scars on my face so it must be that i'm projecting because maki oh my god the moment like with the, I, I believe it was last chapter where she got reintroduced back into the story it's been a little bit since we've seen her and then in this one i'm just there like going crazy Easy. for starters i personally feel like Gagakutami loves drawing maki like those close-ups with the scars and everything is just mwah, the detail he loves to put into it similar probably to now that i think about it maybe it's just really interesting and enjoyable to draw all those extra details on faces because in chainsaw man i feel the same way about the character that has the scars but either way i, I just was really happy to see maki like hands down bar none i'm gonna say it i'm gonna say it i'm gonna say it i personally feel like maki is the best female um in shonen manga currently active like if you compare her to pretty much anything that we have in any series in shonen who's really on that level like i would throw the argument that as much as people love itachi uchiha from naruto if you want something close to that who's really on that level aside from maki dog bar none what she did with the zanin clan massacre i say hey you wanted to make a movie out of jujutsu kaisen zero make a movie or at the very least a tv special something for the the Zenin clan massacre because Maki did the work so when I see Maki I'm like yeah come on dog my hero academia love the series what female is really on that wave one piece there's so many incredible females but actively right now actively actively on that badassery who's really messing with Maki if somebody says big mom I'm gonna laugh I'm gonna probably say well yeah but it's different but still, dog, it, it, it's Maki. And I guess you could argue that Chainsaw Man right now has a contender. But it's really early in comparison. So maybe I got to calm down on that one. It's Maki, dog. Maki is bar none one of the most badass females. And I, I, I feel like I'm even 
kind of lowballing her to say just females. She's one of the most badass characters actively in Shonen. So when I see her, I'm like, yes, baby, let's go. Even if it's that a new curse spirit is there chasing her and the newfound Norito Shikamo. And I say newfound, but it's literally just that he got a haircut that I can't freaking stand. I may have it up tied up really nicely, but I got really long hair. And if you've watched any of my videos when my hair is down, you know this, man. Long hair, don't care. However, Maki being the beast that she is can tell that there's something a little more to this cursed spirit because it's just really freaking fast and able to pinpoint locations and while Norito Shikamo is over there because you gotta think dog these are some beasts that this cursed spirit is after like don't sleep on Norito Shikamo like dog is a beast and then of course we got Maki that they literally labeled a monster because she's able to jump through the zones and all that shit without anything just because she's that dude like yeah like th this thing gotta be really strong but then towards the end of the chapter it kind of threw me for a loop and I was like this is a very pleasant and unexpected surprise and I'm not sure exactly we have all the info to really deduce what the hell is going on here because the curse spirit as it's jumping at Maki ultimately reveals to seemingly be Naoya. Naoya the dude that pretty much Maki you know waxed back then is seemingly back as a curse spirit. A couple things come to my mind it could be that this curse spirit's you know technique is to mimic things from let's just say their memories the opponent's memories or something like that it could very well just be that this is Naoya Noya has somehow turned into a curse spirit or is using these capabilities and looks like a curse spirit but isn't actually one there's a multitude of possibilities but I like personally the idea that it's not actually Naoya and it's just replicating Naoya I mean at the end of the day dude is all bloody and battered and shit like that so it still very well could be but I don't know I just personally prefer that it's not Naoya and this curse spirit's technique is to mimic memories, thoughts, or something like that. And then maybe when it goes back and attacks Norito Shikamo, it'll mimic somebody from their clan as well. So that's my theory on it. But honestly, I am so pumped and ready for starters. We have two powerhouses there, in particular Maki. Like, I'm not even going to front. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and lie. While Norito Shikamo, despite even how I feel with the haircut that's irrelevant to it, I'm not really all that enthusiastic about seeing him fight. I think it's going to be great and glorious because he's strong as shit. But I'm a Maki fanboy, dog. I just want to see Maki whip this things ass so i'm really looking forward to this this chapter 191 of jujutsu kaisen from kenjaku basically showing how he manipulated and played everyone like a fiddle from 150 years ago baby so freaking epic again in my opinion and i'm gonna ask you guys right now as a matter of fact is kenjaku on that sosuke aizen bleach level of just as planned all according to plan the fact that he was able to manipulate and get gojo sealed and the people that put the execution out for you to take out yuji set up the calling games he's like that near in every freaking thing dog kashimo's flashback as well he has links to sakuna he was in the body of yuji's mom i just named a few things and there's still so many more things is he on that level with sosuke aizen or at the very least going there the overall thoughts of all this do you think that that's actually naoya is that a curse spirit mimicking naoya because of like memories from maki and your overall thoughts and expectations of how all this is going to play out dog i still can't even believe it yo kenjaku he played them and then kicked kamo out and told him cut your fucking hair when you get out of my house dog like wow <laughs> And your overall thoughts and expectations for where this is all gonna go. I'm for that world, and as always, people, have an awesome day. Remember the golden rule anime and manga for life, lads. Seven.